Good evening, darlings, and welcome to the Nameless Show by Vuyo Chaboja. We still are running the competition where you can give this show a name. And I'd like to ask you to go into social media. We're at Bricks TV and comment on the name that you think would be best suitable for this show. And um, on the show today, we have none other than Utsepo, the gene maker, who's an entrepreneur all the way from Johannesburg. And he's here to share with us on more about his journey into entrepreneurship and what exactly is the gene maker. Ladies and gents, help me welcome Tepo Muthala. Hello, Tepo. How's it? How's it? Good. Awesome. Yeah. Wow, that was great. Thank you for joining us on the show. That was good. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us, Tepo, who Wait, is... Wait, first and foremost, yeah. like, this show doesn't have a name. It doesn't. Do you want to suggest one? Yeah. What, what, what do you think it should be? A Tepo show. Oh, <laughs> and that's Kidding. how that's how you 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 mastering the marketing thing because you put your name everywhere you, you go. You must put your name everywhere. Yeah, call it Vuyo. Why not? Put, put the Vuyo Chaboda show. Okay. Yeah. Why not? We'll we'll have our guests um it's decide suggest. onto that. So, cool. <laughs> but thank you once again for joining us. And thank we just want to me. know exactly who is Tepo. We see this name, we see this brand, we we know that there's someone behind it, but we'd like to know exactly who Tepo is. Sure, um, that's a very deep question. Yeah. Do you want the real story or the theory story? The real story. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Tepo is a 28-year-old um, yeah. entrepreneur from Johannesburg, born and bred in um, Mpumalanga. Grew up in Takane, actually, raised by three strong women, my yeah. mom, my grand, my, uh, my aunt. My mom was one person who taught me how to hustle. Yeah. My grandmother is a master storyteller, and um, she's a type of person who kind of was the anchor in my life. Um, and she taught me almost everything that I know today about mm. myself and how to carry myself when I go out. And I've always inspired, always like wanted to be like her growing up, um, how she would go on stage as a pastor, yeah. how she'd jump on stage and like tell stories as a vehicle to spread a message of hope. Yeah. And I wanted to be like her, but I couldn't yeah. um, because I was a very shy kid. And my aunt was a very stylish person whom um, I think in my family, she was one person who brought TV alive to me. Everything that I saw on TV, every fashion that I saw on TV, she was the first mm -hmm. person to have it in our neighborhood. And for me, I, I wanted to be that person because like, I yeah. couldn't say much, like my presence wasn't felt. So I need to find something to kind of have a presence. Yeah. Um, and clothing was the only thing. Fast forward a couple of years later, finished um, matric, matriculated in Brackman High. Um, when to study filmmaking at after and when i got to after i wanted to be a cinematographer i wanted to be the guy behind the camera who's capturing moments who's yeah. capturing the right images the right you know what i mean stories. like the right stories yeah. in one frame um and and i realized when i was there that i'm in the wrong space i'm supposed to be in fashion school dropped out to study fashion couldn't complete my studies at doing fashion, um, but I think for me that was a blessing in disguise because that was the beginning of my journey. Um, Tepo is a very open-minded, yeah. um, visionary, um, a, a God-fearing man, and, um, and, and, and I'm just crazy about creation. Yeah, you, and you've created a beautiful brand. Um, when, you. Did you, when did you realize that there's something about you at, 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 in your journey. You mentioned that you did um, filmmaking and you know, your childhood and everything, but when did you realize that there's something about me that's, that's different, that's somehow great? Sure, that's a very difficult question. <laughs> when did I realize there's something great about me? I think everybody is great. Yeah. Everybody has a purpose. Um, so growing up from a very Christian background, um, we're taught that everybody in this world lives to serve a purpose. Yeah. And for me, it was like, I just wanted to serve my purpose being on earth. Like with the time that I'm given on earth, I just want to serve my purpose and I want to do it right. And um, I just, re uh, and, and for me, like, I think beyond jeans and fashion and the creative industry, my purpose is to serve people. Yeah. I was raised by people who serve people. My grand is like one person who serves people. And um, like I remember growing up, because I my gate, we didn't lock our gates. 2 a.m. in the morning, people would knock and come and say, hey, Macris, I need help. Um, can you pray for me? Can you talk to me? So for me, it's like she has always served people from the richest person to the most poorest person. And everybody like she speaks to them at a very mm. same level with no bias yeah. or anything. And for me, it's like it's the same thing. Like I feel like I need to serve people, but I'm serving people by just making them feel confident by giving them inspiration, by giving them hope. Um, and the most beautiful thing that we've done with our 
but our ba or business rather, is um, we enabled people, a woman, about 12 women, to work in an atelier, train them up mm. um, to become world-class gene makers. Mm. And, um, and, and every, each and every person who's there is like walking distance away from, yeah. from the office. And I think for me, that's one of the most beautiful things ever to do as a brand or as a business and also for me as an individual it's one thing that makes me realize that i'm serving my purpose and when people come in wearing a pair of jeans and very happy i think it also kind of reminds me i'm serving my purpose it's yeah. beyond money it's beyond fame and i think that's um the biggest thing for yeah. me that's when i realize i have its purpose there's, there's something great in yeah. inside of you and um you mentioned that you you, you work with people and you you want to serve people what why how why did you think fashion was the way to do that for you that it was a way for you to to serve it's uh for me it comes naturally yeah i don't force it um i think i understand style i can see trends and um and denim i think the the I th when i was on the street hustling and doing whatever um, I look for a fabric with purpose, and denim was the only fabric with purpose that I could find. And it's something that I love. It's something that's worn by everybody, black, white, Indian. Everybody mm. loves jeans around the world. The seven billion people in the world, and probably each and every individual has had an encounter with a pair of jeans. Yeah. And for me, it's the only, it's the most beautiful platform to use. Um, that one product or one fabric that's understandable, that's relatable, and um, that's not racist, that's not, that doesn't have boundaries, it's yeah. just a five pocket pair of jeans and um, we, we can play around. Yeah. It's the most, I think it's one of the biggest platforms in the world yeah. after TV yeah. or before TV or after music. Yeah, and, and so far, I don't know, I think you know, what you've done, you've changed the, the, the idea of what fashion can be or what it is. But for someone who's sitting at home and they're hearing us talking about the brand and everything, what, how would you describe your brand? If someone doesn't know what, what Sepo the Gene Maker is, what would you say describes the, the brand that you have? Um, sure. Big questions, Vuyo. <laughs> <laughs> what, what describes the brand? Um, I think it's everyday functionality, mm -hmm. lifestyle practicality. Um, it's it's high-end jeans for everybody. I think that's what yeah. describes the brand. And is it, is it just, I know you're wearing one of, you're wearing your jean right now, right? Yeah, I'm yeah, assuming. Yeah. <laughs> is, it, is it just denims that you do? Because you're wearing a t-shirt as well and it has your name on it. And how do you play around with denim? Or do you just make den jeans that people wear as pants or Share with there's us more on, 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 on the dynamics really, uh, of brand. Um, I think like once you start getting into it, like you understand, like it goes deeper than just it being a five pocket pair of jeans. Mm. It's, it's, there's so much innovation happening like behind um, on the fabric side of things, like the jeans that I'm wearing, basically like it's a recycled denim. Mm. Um, so we've taken like old denim, recycled it, and we've created a range of jeans which we're dropping in the next couple of weeks in mm. December. Um, and and it's so much innovation that's happening from the fabrics perspective for it to feel much more smoother, um, to be um, more stretchy, to be comfortable for the South African for South African my audience especially. Um, if you look at our climate, it's kind of hot and it's cold in yeah, yeah. So we had to create a fabric that speaks to that, that can handle that, but also look stylish at the same mm. time. Um, so we do we, our main at the at the moment our main product is denims. But we do have supporting acts, I call them, <laughs> <laughs> which is our T-shirts, yeah. um, hats, um, and we're also venturing into accessories, mm. small things like keychains, yeah. um, and, and it's, uh, there's more stuff that we're doing. Mm. So it changes the ring, and then other it changes the ring, and then. <laughs> <laughs> oh my word! And 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 I know that you've done such, you know, amazing. And I keep saying this: you've done amazing things with, because you've not only taken jeans but you've, you've made it somehow a story you know people can identify with what say the gene maker is what do you think is the importance of of storytelling through whatever it is that you do whether it be you know television whether it be you know whatever field that you're in people are into stories you mm. know people love stories the reason we go to like the movie theater is because we want to want to watch a story the, move, the reason we go to school to read a book or the reason why we buy books is because of stories. If you're a Christian, the Bible you read, mm. it's literally one big story. Mm. If, you know, basically people love stories, people are drawn to stories. And, um, and everybody always kind of wants a new story once in a yeah. while. Everybody wants hope. 
And um, I think for me, like a, a beautiful brand is a story well told. Mm. And um, for us, it's like we use stories as a vehicle to kind of yeah. spread a message of hope. Yeah. And most importantly, um, I, I don't feel my brand is a brand. I feel like it's a story. Yeah. And um, in 2051, that's when it's going to become a brand. Okay. I just want to I just want to hold you on there because you have to go to a quick commercial break. And talking of stories, you have a beautiful story to tell us about how you met the Duchess of, of right. Sussex. <laughs> um, and we'll chat more about that cool. um, straight after this ad break. We'll see you just now. And welcome back, ladies and gents. You're still watching The Nameless Show by Vuyo Chamoja. Remember that we are still asking you to send us those names. So go to social media at Bricks TV and share, share, share what you think we should name the show. And we're speaking about stories a little bit earlier on in the show with Utsebo Musala. And he's here to tell us more about the story of how he met the Duchess of Sussex. Am I saying it correctly? I think so. I don't even know how to say it. I don't <laughs> even say it. Well, you met her. That's all that matters. <laughs> that's all that matters. Um, what happened? Where? How? Who said what? How did you meet Meghan Markle? Um, I, they came to me. They call, they called me. I think uh, people came over to our space a couple of months ago. Yeah. And it was just, um, you know, when these people do their thing, they won't tell you who they are. But I think they got one of the best experiences when they got yeah. to the space. And, like, we treat everybody with the same um, attitude to treat everybody. We try to give everybody who comes into the space because we don't know who comes in there and um, just give them a great brand experience. Mm. And when they went back to the UK a um, couple of weeks, months later, I got a call um, and they're like, hey, Taps, listen, um, Megan would like to buy a pair of jeans from you because she's coming to South Africa. I was like, oh my goodness, who's Megan? <laughs> you know, I didn't say who's Megan. I was like, okay, this is such a huge. English accent yeah and maybe these guys are playing me <laughs> um, and put down the phone and I call my sister to me who's Megan Marco and she's like Whoa! <laughs> and she goes crazy I'm like who is she she's like oh my god tell for the Duchess Harry's I'm like oh my god <laughs> um, she's coming to South Africa yeah. and um, she wants us to make a pair of jeans and we were like, oh my God, I was like, okay, cool. So two days later, they're like, Taps, we're going to London, we're going to, to London, can we have those jeans by today? I was like, unfortunately, we take about a week or two yeah. to make jeans. And yeah. like, ah, snap, cool. I don't know how we're gonna get them to the UK, but like, and then we continue to make the pair of jeans. And then she came to South Africa, cause when she came here, she, her tour was basically, she wanted to wear the jeans for, the, for okay. the tour. Yeah. Um, and, um, when she got here, I was like, okay, we'll see if how we find, like, we get the mm. jeans to her. We'll find a way, either way, you know. Um, and then on a the Sunday, well, they came on a Monday. On a Sunday, I got a call from them around 7. And this guy's like, hey, Taps, listen, man, um, Megan wants to come to your studio and wow. see what to do and whatever. I don't know if you, are you open to that? Wow. I was like, of course, bro. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> <laughs> and, um, yeah, and that's what happened. They came down, they shut down the whole place. Um, she went around, saw mm. a couple of studios, came into the space, and what we did in the morning before she got there, mm. what we did, my accountant Belinda, um, she's, you know, I'm so happy that I have a very good team. Um, she's like, you know, Megan has a baby, and um, let's, Archie, yeah. yeah, let's make some stuff, for, let's make some jeans for Archie. Mm. And um, we went out, she made a pattern for jeans, for a dungaree pattern, and within an hour we had a a dangari yeah. already made. Yeah. And when Megan came in, I mean, like, had a conversation. She was so cool. She was a, the most amazing person mm. that I ever seen. Like, you know, she's yeah. she's amazing. She's yeah. an amazing individual. Um, besides her being royalty, and um, I walked into the studio, introduced her to everybody else, and I was like, "Yo, listen, actually, we made you something for for Achi." She was like, "What?" <laughs> Yeah. And the thing is, like, we're not allowed to take pictures. No cameras were allowed. And, like, she was r literally running in, like, in the studio. Because, like, I was like, actually, I made something for you. And she's yeah. like, what? Yeah, yeah. And she went crazy. And then she pulled them. She's like, oh, my God. This is Archie's ones or hers now? No, Archie's ones. Yeah, oh, she yeah. was like, okay, like, uh, whatever. She knew what she, she was going to Yeah, get. you yes, know, yes. but, like, you know, the, that Archie thing, like, yeah. I think it was just, like, and the thing is, like, you just see how, how much parents love their babies mm. it's like if you consider my child then you're amazing you know and and for me that was the most beautiful thing to ever watch to yeah. see royalty running in my studio and like i was like yo dude you're gonna trip 
So, <laughs> you know, and also and you created an experience where she can share something with the son. Yeah. You know, now she can be like, we're yeah. both wearing something from Absolutely. South Africa. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, that's yeah. Absolutely. absolutely amazing. Absolutely. And you not only have presence in the royal house, because now you're part of the family. <laughs> <laughs> you have presence all over the world. How did that, how did you, how did you get to that point where you were able to establish, establish yourself in, in different I, countries? It's the power of social media, hey? Yeah. Like for me, I think I've, it's a, like for me, it's like one gene at a time. And, and that's what I've been doing. It's like for four years, I've been doing the same thing every day. No fail. Mm. Showing up every day, one gene at a time, and using social media to spread the message consistently, consistently, and doing stuff like this, mm. doing interviews, um, chatting to people, going out, meeting the right people, um, chilling around with the right people, finding yourself in the right circles. And then also, like I think the most beautiful thing is that we positioned ourselves in a very right space Victoria, which is like an emerging space in Johannesburg. Mm. It's in the center of Johannesburg, but it doesn't feel like in Johannesburg. It's surrounded by world-class makers. Mm. And um, for us as a brand, there's like, what better way for us, or for us to position ourselves in a space like that? Yes, there's no foot traffic, but um, it kind of puts us in a level where it's like, it's very world-class and it's, it's, it's literally a traveler's or a tourist destination. Mm. So if you're from New York or wherever, like if you wanna see South Africa and experience South Africa, they send you there. So that's how we got our stuff outside the world that people would come in, take the stuff out and then call us, yo bro, listen, a friend of mine from LA saw this, can you send me this? And that's how we kind of grew, you know, and through networks and now we have some stuff in Amsterdam and hopefully like, you know, within the next year it's Japan, New York, um, London and you know slowly but surely taking over the world. Wow, global brand. Yeah. I would put it that way. Absolutely. And I mean, Tepo, what what are some of the lessons that you've learned? Because I know entrepreneurship is not easy. You know, it comes with its ups and downs. What have you learned from from your journey, from your four year experience um, with the brand? It's patience, eh? Patience and believing in yourself, and um, yeah, it's doing the same thing until you get it right, and mm. always have a bigger purpose. Um, yeah, I think for me that's one thing that I've learned is just believe even when like, you know, making money is not about money. Yeah. You know, money should be the last thing on our mind because money follows you. If you follow money, you make mistakes. So just focus on what you're good at. Yeah. Get better at it. Be the best. And, um, take over the world. You, you like this taking over the world. <laughs> so like, it's, your, it's your trademark. <laughs> also, over. I mean, it's not only been hard. I know there's been some highs as well. What do you think are some of those exciting moments that you think, you know, this makes me want to go back. This is this is what I love most about Seeing what I do. Seeing people wearing this stuff with pride. Yeah. It's the most beautiful feeling ever. Yeah. Seeing something that you've created in your mind, put on a product, and people love it. For me, it's the most beautiful feeling in the mm. world. Wow. And you mentioned that you're working with 12 amazing ladies that you, you know, are from the area that you're in. Um, how, is the, how, how is your community and how is the area that you're around benefiting from, from, from this brand that you p personally created? I mean, like, um, we've taken people, some of them didn't know how to sew today. They're world class gene makers. And um, for me, it's like I've kind of upskilled people and now they have something that they can take home even if probably we close down. I'm not, we're not gonna close down anytime soon. Maybe not I'm, when I'm still watching it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the fact that we've given other people hope and we've given them a job and we na enable them to like take care of their families with benefits, medical aid mm -hmm. and all this stuff, for me it's the most beautiful feeling ever is that like you've kind of given somebody who never thought in their life they'd get these things at the ages of 40, 50, and now they're seeing it happen and they can just walk to work and all their money is their money and they're upskilled mm. and they're trained by the best people in the world. You know, so for me, it's the most beautiful thing to ever watch um, and to see that I'm also like doing something to, you know, uplift Boost the country. The others. Yeah. yeah. And you have something very exciting coming soon, December. Yeah. What is going to be happening? Well, in December, we're launching our ready to wear range, mm -hmm. um, one style. Um, for different washes and um, the most beautiful thing is that like I've named it after basically it was inspired by my unsung heroes or um, I don't like the word unsung but like um, my heroes like s people who are heroes but not in the public you know okay. could have been easy for us to go to the Mandela family and say hey we'd like to make a gene that we celebrating Nelson Mandela but um, I had to look deeper and celebrate people who actually had an impact in my life mm. uh, my grandmother 
my mom, my aunt, and um, one person that I hardly talk about, my granddad, and um, and so all the genes I don't know about it. So all the genes that we've done is basically telling their stories uh -huh. in my life, and um, probably some something that's going to inspire other people, and also maybe look around and say, hey, actually I do have am I someone like Emma Grisa in my life. I do have a Radu who's my granddad in my life, and these are people that we always have to celebrate. Mm. Wow, that's absolutely, absolutely inspiring. And I think people are going to resonate with it more because they, they yeah. can understand. Yeah. And you put your name on your brand, right? That means that people are getting to know more about you. And I think it's also, I, I, we would like to know some, some facts, Sanjay, about Utsepo the person. Um, okay. what, are some <laughs> what are some of the things that you could say, these things de define, you know, some fun facts about Utsepo, maybe two or three? Well, I'm easygoing. Yeah. Um, I don't like partying. Okay. And um, I don't know, man. I'm just crazy about creation. Yeah. I'm just crazy about creation and domination. Yeah. Yeah. And and what what makes you? Because I'm trying to I'm trying to get our audience to the world to the to, to so that when they get these jeans, they can be like, okay, so I'm wearing Tepo, and this is the kind of person that Tepo is. This is what makes Tepo excited. This is what makes Tepo laugh. This is what. I love people. I love people. I spend yeah. more time with people. I love family. I love. I love creating moments. I love. I love. Uh, I'm a very confident person in my own way, and um, I think I'm highly connected, um, and 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 I'm humble, mm -hmm. I'm very confident, and um, and and I'm a believer. You know, I believe in myself than any other person. Yeah. You know, so there's nothing that can shake me. Yeah. I just look in the mirror. I'm like, okay, cool. Let's go. This is Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> and so for in, in a minute, what is the future looking like for your brand? Oh my goodness, like these lights are so bright. <laughs> <laughs> the future is the future's looking bright for us, um, but I cannot talk about 20 years from now. I yeah. can probably only talk about the next six months. Um, the brand is growing. It's growing feet. It's only four years old in the next couple of weeks. Um, and like, you know, we should be teething now and um, it's painful. But like it's a very important process, and um, we're not in a rush for anything. You know, we're gonna do this thing slowly but slowly, one gene at a time, touching one person at a time. And for me, I believe that like the best selling story is if you touch one person, then you've got a bestseller. And if I can touch one person, for me, I've got a bestseller because that one person is gonna convert to ten person. Yeah. And you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and yeah, that's what I'm looking at. Oh man, you've touched me and I know you've touched our audiences at home. I hope so. And Thank we you. wish you all of the best with your journey and I'm hoping that, you know, everything that you've said today is going to come into realization. Absolutely. Ladies and gents, that is Tepo Mushala. If you don't have a pair of Tepo the, the Jean Maker jeans, now is the time for you to go and get yourself a pair. And we'd like to thank Tepo for joining us on the show and we'd like to thank you for tuning in here on the Nameless Show with Buyo Chaboda. Go on social media and share those names because we'd like you to please help us give the show a name. I am Buyo Chaboda and I'd like to say please tune in same, same place, same time next week here yeah, on The Nameless Show. It's Chapa now.